One of the books that I wrote is called A Simple Christmas. Now, it was one of the favorite books I've ever done. I've done 14. It was written in part because it isn't a political book at all. It's a series of personal stories that illustrate just how the most meaningful Christmases of our lives are often the simplest ones. You know, it's not having the most elaborate tree or decorations or setting the perfect table with the perfect menu, perfectly cooked and served. That rarely happens anyway. The best Christmas is usually the one that is most like the first one, very simple. A young, pregnant, unmarried teenage girl, probably about 14 years old, ended up in labor while taking a trip with her fiancé, a young Jewish carpenter named Joseph. They were in a sleepy little town called Bethlehem, but there was no place for them to seek refuge and no place for Mary to deliver her baby other than a borrowed cave where animals were kept and fed. In a feeding trough that was designed to feed sheep and goats, she placed her newborn son. That was nothing like the scene depicted in church pageants where things seem so, well, clean and holy and angelic. This was a nasty, smelly place fit for farm animals, not intended to be a delivery room for a human baby. But when God wanted to reveal himself to mankind, he didn't choose to come in a chariot of blazing fire surrounded by angels and choirs and wondrous miracles. He came in the most humble of circumstances and in a way that identified with the lowliest people on earth, not the wealthiest or the most powerful. You know, he's still doing that. He shows up to bring comfort and love to the people who the world views as the unlovable and the untouchable. No place is too low. No person is too lost for him. It's why I think of Christmas in simple terms, simple memories of playing checkers with my Uncle Garvin, a lifelong bachelor who came and stayed at our house every Christmas. Or maybe I remember Aunt Mary's popcorn balls that she made every year and brought to the family Christmas dinner. Honestly, they were so chewy and sticky from the Cairo syrup that she made them with. It's a miracle that any of us had teeth after eating one of those things. And my mother made chocolate chip cookies with chocolate chips and pecans that came from the pecan trees that were in our yard. They are still the best chocolate chip cookies I've ever had. At least that's how I remember them. I remember some of my Christmas gifts from childhood especially the electric guitar that I begged for for three Christmases in a row, always being told that we couldn't afford it. So what else did I want? After three years of getting what else, I finally declared I wanted an electric guitar or nothing. Only when I was an adult did I found out just how close I was that year to getting nothing. <laughs> but that year, my parents ordered for my Christmas my first electric guitar from the J.C. Penney catalog. The whole rig, amp and all, cost $99, which to them was a fortune. In fact, it took them a full year to pay for it. They paid a little every month, and they didn't even do much for Christmas for themselves that year. But it was a simple guitar that changed my life. Not that I was ever good enough to make a living at it, but learning to play meant learning that for every hour of performing, there are hours and hours of practice. You know, that turned out to be a good life lesson for every endeavor I ever did. And playing in front of people, that helped me overcome what was an incredible shyness that you probably wouldn't recognize today. So as you prepare for your Christmas, keep it simple. God did. And it sure has made a difference in our lives that he did. Now, if you're seeing this, I know you've enjoyed that video. I mean, how could you not after all? So you know what you should do? Leave a like, click on the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell next to it. So you'll always know when I have another video up for you to enjoy.